sorry. Um, I want to start talking about a, diff a new book. Start a more series and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I've been reading a book called pa or by Paula Freire called Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Um, it's really interesting. It's not something that I had read in any of my classes at the university or anything or anything like that, but it is quite interesting, and I really, I really do like it. I've read the first chapter, um, and I had known something about what about what it was about um, because I have watched a certain certain set of lectures from um, Jason J Jason J Campbell. Um, but Pedagogy of the of the of the Oppressed is um, a book which, of course, talks about those who have been oppressed, um, and it kind of is a pedagogy in that it's uh, talking about a way to free those who have been oppressed. And this is not, you know, a typical book which talks about a certain group of people who have been oppressed. But it literally is talking about all of those who are who are who are oppressed, the the oppressed the the, the oppressed people in general, um, and uh, this is, in my opinion, a existentialist book uh, because it does have a lot of parallels to uh, Jean Jean Paul Sartre and um, um, uh, Karl Marx even. So it has parallels to Marxism and um, definitely is a part of the of the of the existential existentialism of Jean Paul Sartre and uh, um, and uh, Simone de, de Beauvoir and also Camus. Um, but the whole thing here, um, I read the first chapter to 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 get ready for for, for a video. And I'm still kind of learning here, so it is. It isn't. It isn't like I'm a expert here. This isn't in in lots of in most of my videos. Um, before I make a video on, I have read most of the text, or am at least pretty well learned about the text. Um, that's not entirely the case here. Um, I have learned about it online through Jason J. Jason J. J. Campbell, but uh, other than just reading it, this is kind of my first thing on this. Um, this is my first first video about free air, so I'm kind of trying to trying to get trying to to get into it on, on this on this channel because I think it is worth talking about. It is very interesting, and it just really is in general worth worth discussing. Um, so he's talking about first off the. You know, I guess first I should explain who is he talking about the oppressed. Um, his whole main thing is that there's this oppressed oppressor or uh, oppressor oppressed con contradiction, and you know it's kind of like how he's kind of just explaining about how think about anybody who's been who's been who's been who's who has been oppressed. Think about. Um, Let's say for uh, for an easy example, a family which is very patriarchal and is very heavy um, in um, who va basically venerates and reveres the father. A family 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 like that. A father in a family like that has a very um, high status and is very. Um, respected and the father tells everybody what to do and uh, oftentimes in a in a, in a situation like that um, the father can become abusive so let's say that there's a couple of sons and the youngest son out of say four the father the father loves his three of his three Three, three of his boys and loves, you know how how great they are and loves everything that that, 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 that they do, but then his youngest fourth son is not as strong and thick as the father 
and the first three boys are. He's younger, he's scrawny, and he's not as strong, not as, not as, uh, not as, uh, um, not as uh, aggressive and not as stoic. Um, so the father might abuse him physically and um, verbally um, and basically kind of in a way oppresses him so we have the seat the oppressor which is off we did keep the oppressor which is obviously the father and the the, the, the the son who was obviously the the oppressed so the fourth son tries to constantly get bigger get um, stronger and be, tries to be like the other the other boys tries to be like the father tries to basically tries to bring himself out of that position into a position like his brothers and his father and like and also to a position of a oppressor rather than one who is who is oppressed Friere is hinting that there's a, this oppressed oppressor contradiction in that the oppressor oppresses people or oppresses a certain party and basically divides those those and divides the the, the, the those who are oppressed from from themselves so the boy in his oppressed state is basically being divided in in himself and it's kind of like how Marx says the proletarian in his um exploited state um is alienated from himself because of his um, exploitation and how his earnings are going to the um, bourgeois, which that is what the proletarian worked for, and he's being he's being alienated from himself because of the things that he produces, the things he does, going to somebody higher than him. So it's kind of kind of similar here. Um, Kind of, kind of similar, um, Marx and Freire. Um, so we have this contradiction, and Freire is saying that the oppressed, in their constant state, is trying to 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 get to get to get out of that state, but get into a state of being of of oppressing, further oppressing, um, and they don't understand, and it's like this endless horrible cycle. Where they don't understand that what they want is liberation, what they what they want is freedom, and they don't understand that they can have that. They can have a real transformation. They can get their freedom, but they can't constantly stay in the same cycle. So a pedagogy of the oppressed is somebody from the outside coming in and changing things, showing both parties. So in a way, the also the the oppressor, though he is oppressing, is himself also the oppressed. So you can see this little, this little paradox here. So, Freire mentions what is called hu humanization. Concern for humanization leads leads at once to the recognition of dehumanization dehumanization not only as an ontological possibility but but as an uh, but as a historical reality dehumanization which marks not only those who, who whose humanity has been stolen but also those who have stolen it it is is a distortion of the vocation of, of becoming more fully human um, because it is a, it is it is a, it is a distortion of being more fully human Sooner or later, being less human leads to leads the leads the oppressed to struggle against those who, who made them so. In order for this struggle to have meaning, the oppressed must not, in seeking to 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 regain their their humanity, become in turn oppressors of the oppressors, but rather restores the the humanity of both. So you have this constant cycle where the this constant cycle this this is a constant cycle of de, of dehumanization, where um, the oppressors have been oppressed and tried to, and well, whereas the oppressed 
want uh, want to get out of that state and what they want to 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 regain power and want to get out of that state however in that state they want to regain power and they're trying striving to regain their 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 hu humanity but they don't know how so they gain they get they get they get out of their out of that state but in, uh, but they get into a state of oppressing others and that then they get into a state of power um and like people who are peasants say who are in a, who are in a oppressed state want reform and they want things to things to change in government because they you know that thus would give them you know more land or more whatever that would give that would put them in a in a, in a, in a state of power but what would that do that that would, that would make them do do, do do the same thing to people who were who were who were in the state that they were previously so it's a constant cycle of dehumanization and in that state, um, people are divided from within within themselves. This is the great humanistic and, and historical task of, of the oppressed to liberate themselves and and their and their oppressors as well. The the the, the oppressors who oppress, exploit, and rape by virtue of their power cannot find it in the can't, cannot find in this power the strength to, to, to liberate either the oppressed or themselves. Only power that springs from the weakness of, of the oppressed will be sufficiently strong to free to free both. In order to have the continued opportunity to express their generosity, the the, the oppressors must per perpetuate injustice as well. Um But almost always during the initial stage of the, of the struggle, the, the oppressed, instead of striving for liberation, tend themselves to become oppressors or sub-oppressors. Sub and they had this idea of becoming a new man or a new woman, changing things. When that ends up the idea of the new man ends up being that of being a oppressor in themselves the one who was once oppressed and what they want what they really want but they don't know is they want revelation re revolution they want li they want liberation they are afraid of it but that's really what they want that is what true freedom will be and that is what can humanize and bring them back to their own humanity. So what's also here in in, in, in Freire's writing is a humanism. Um, it's a kind of a central central focus on the human and bringing the human the, the the humanity back to back to back to center focus and uh, making that the goal. The oppressed, having internalized the image of the oppressor and adopted his, 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 his guidelines, are fearful of freedom. Freedom is acquired by conquest, not by gift. It must be pursued constantly and responsibly. The oppressed suffer from the, from the duality which has established itself in their innermost being. They discover without that without freedom they cannot exist authentically. So... This is existentialism in that to exist authentically is to exist in yourself and to um, not negate anything within yourself and to be yourself entirely. Um, you know, so a for Sartre, a being for others is a bad faith or inauthentic existence because that's a part of you that you are fleeing from. <clears throat> in, this, in this oppressed oppressor conflict, this whole cycle of de of de of dehumanization is a inauthenticity among everyone. Yet, though they desire authentic authentic existence, they fear it. 
They are at one and the same time themselves and the oppressor whose, whose consciousness they have internalized. The conflict lies in the choice be, between being wholly themselves or being divided, between ejecting the, 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 the oppressor within or not ejecting them, between human, human solidarity or alienation, between following prescriptions or having choices, between being spectators or, or actors, between acting or having the illusion of, of acting through the action of the oppressors, <coughs> between speaking out or being silent, castrated in, in their power to, re to create and re recreate, in their power to, tr to, tr to transform the world. This is the tragic the tra the tra 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 dilemma of the, of the oppressed which their education must take into account. And he also mentions Hegel. And, rec and Hegel kind of had this constant concept of the dialectic, which was that things conflict and contradict to make things to make things the way they are. And to make things kind of, it's almost, it's almost like a ball bouncing back, back, and, bouncing back and forth. That uh, things conflict and things change to make things better for the way they are now. And Freire ultimately states that a pedagogy of the oppressed, someone from, from the outside coming in to change things and liberate people, to bring, to, to bring people to their free, wholly authentic e existence. <coughs> that there can be a real, a truly real transformation and through, through, through looking at there are current things and what they really could be, they could be free, they could be holy, holy, authentic, holy self. They could that they could transform things. Um, however, due to fear, due to um, the constant the constant cycle and how nobody inside of the whole thing knows how to know, knows how to break it, um, it doesn't it, it does it, it doesn't happen. So. Um, from what I've been taught, a lot of a lot of things are taught in this book to sort of help that. It, this it really is a pedagogy of the oppressed in that it's a formula almost to um, break such such a oppressed oppressor paradox. So um, I'll keep I'll keep doing videos on this. Um, I've done most of chapter one, so I'll probably do chapter two and three and four. Um, yeah, if you think I've messed something up or left something out, please comment below letting me know.